Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, Living Inside Your Aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about algae. Slimy, annoying, green hair algae, the kind that you find in freshwater tanks very often, especially if you change up anything in your regiment of fertilizers and things like that if you have a planted tank. So... This tank was spotless of algae. There was almost no visible algae. You're never going to get rid of all the algae. It's, it's actually a good thing to have some algae. Uh, but you didn't see it as of a week ago. And now we've got these globs of it. And when you collect it and you put it together, what do these globs look like? They're actually choking out some of these plants here, like this Rotala wulichii or wulichia. Um, it looks like this green slimy hair, and when it gets out of water, it's really unruly and sticky and gross. So I'm going to stick it to this rock as my, uh, almost like a desk to stick the bubble gum under. It's not the best, <laughs> it's not the best place to put it on that rock. Um, I should have like a little thing of water and just be flicking it off into a tub of water. That's, I've found is the best, best best method and then pour the water down the drain but first before we understand how to fix this problem because it'll start growing all over the rocks and glass and everywhere else even more we need to understand what algae is algae is a collection of singular cell or it becomes multi-celled in that it's working together in a colony strands of teeny tiny little plants and basically that's where the green comes from in green algaes there's also cyanobacteria which work in tandem with other uh, bacterias and they get their energy from other sources but today we're going to be talking about this green slimy algae probably the most common source or type of algae i would say and also Surprisingly, it can be one of the easier ones to treat once you know what to do. Most people go to the store, they get something that says it's going to kill algae, they dump it in, and then they just proceed on with their life. Well, oftentimes it turns out by adding fertilizers or one bottle cures, things like that, you're not going to fix the problem. You're actually going to compound the problem, things like... People will put extra prime in, thinking that, oh, that'll get the nitrates and the ammonia that's in the water that's causing these little plants, the algae, to grow, and that'll bind it up. Well, one, that binds it up for your plants. Two, it locks it up only for so long, and then it breaks back down, then it's back in the ecosystem in various compounds and forms. So really, you've got one tried and true method that will help no matter what, and that's a water change because you're going to be getting fresh water into the system. And so I would recommend do, starting a regimen of water changes if you have that. You can start big with 30 or 40 percent probably, uh, and then you know do 20 percent after that each day or somewhere along those lines. It depends on the fish and plants you have. So consult someone near you who may know a little more about the hobby or drop me a line if you're worried about uh, what to do. But basically, with this tank, I feel confident that I could do a 60% water change with the, the critters living in here. Uh, all of them like soft water. And this is pretty soft water, being that I am trying to breed panda loaches eventually, and this is their grow-out tank, as well as erythromicrons, uh, rasboras, axelrod rasboras, and a pair of guppies, blue Hawaiian Moscow guppies. So... Back to the topic at hand, the algae. So what does algae need to live? Well, since it's green and it's a plant, it needs light. It needs something to photosynthesize, and that means to turn light into energy. And so when you've got light on your tank, you could do something called a blackout, which is people sometimes throw something that stops all light from getting in their tank for several days into their tank and they basically just close the lid on things and uh, don't let the light in, don't add extra food, they do a couple water changes 
And that sometimes, if you're really desperate, can get rid of algae. But that's a pretty drastic step to take, especially when you learn a little bit more about how plants and algae work together. So surprisingly, what I do when I start seeing this algae, I see it on plants like this one here. And I know that where I see a little bit around the edges, you see the fuzziness and the floating that's caught junk just floating by in the water. Where I see a little, there's going to be more very soon. Like within six to eight hours, usually, it will double in size with this stuff. It is tenacious algae, and it grows using phosphates, so phosphorus, iron. Uh, it also grows using uh, carbon somewhat, but not a ton, not, not like plants do. And then it grows using all the other fertilizers that we like our plants to have. So when I say it doesn't use carbon like plants do, that's your secret weapon right there. You're trying to pump as much carbon, and it has to be useful carbon. You can get different types of carbon in filters and things like that that are not organically available for for bonding. Basically, they have electrons on the on the com so you have a compound or you have an element and you have your carbon and it has a space to bond to other things. Now, if that space is already taken up by CO2 or something else, it changes the way it interacts, um, you know, or C H2 or something like that. It it changes the way it interacts and when using co2 it's in a form that plants can breathe in basically in the daytime and they can molecularly disassemble that c and that o and they get rid of the oxygen after they use what they need because plant cells do respire and then they use the carbon the carbon in the ground in the form of charcoal and dead things, so fertilizers, and in the form of carbon that fish breathe out that becomes a dead zone. They don't, you can't have too much, it's kind of a fine dance, but when you have enough carbon, then your plants will flourish because your plants are carbon based creatures or organisms, I should say, just as we are. You've probably heard that before carbon based life form. Well, the carbon that they are made out of is what allows them to build. It's the scaffolding or the skeleton of the plant. It allows them to build uh, up and high, and it also allows it to dock with other elements like phosphorus. So plants can't even use iron or phosphorus or sulfites or nitrites, nitrates. They can't use any of that without the carbon. So your carbon is your regulator, and if you can get your plants using up those nutrients in the water before your algae has time to use them up, because algae often uses phosphorus as its type, if you can get your plants to be pulling in that phosphorus, phosphorus in plants is actually what rec what uh, modulates their metabolism. So in a, on a cellular level, uh, phosphate chains and and phosphate or phosphorus basically control how much energy a plant cell is making or putting out in uh, reinforcement and opening of cell walls. Uh, living animals do not have cell walls. They have membranes. Plants have cell walls as the algae does also. And basically that uh, helps turn on their metabolism. And so they need that carbon for that to happen. And so once you've got that magic bullet of carbon uh, at the level it needs to be at, if you're using a low-tech tank, you can use something like Flourish XL, I suppose. But I don't like to dump bottles of things in, so I'm going to recommend a couple other things too. So one would be to up your flow. This flow has been doubled from what it was, and that will help a little bit mix things up. doesn't let algae get its foothold quite as well. Um, you can turn down your light a little bit, but oftentimes you want your plants to be absorbing carbon and other nutrients as fast as they can. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but if you crank up the CO2 or Flourish XL, 
you should crank up your light too because the both the both are needed in tandem to uh, photosynthesize, which basically stacks the building blocks of that carbon that the plants are rearranging. So doing those two things alone will help getting rid of algae. Now, the last thing and the other thing that's not the fun part and people hate it and they say, really, is I will often not do anything for a couple days except turn up the, the flow of water and I will wait until uh, the al algae approaches this level. See how it's on this plant and it's kind of wispy and it's just there? That's not enough to grab a hold of very easily. But over here, I can actually take that plant and gel gently I can put my fingers in here and pull off a big old ball of algae, which when it's in its early stages, basically that's algae waiting to grow that's sneaking. And it's actually easier to deal with when it's in its big colony form than when it's in its small, just like taking over some surface area forms. Um, now this you have to be gentle because oftentimes you'll uproot plants like I just did. Um, but just go ahead and you can tease the algae off. Whoops, sorry guys. Got the cord in the way. You can tease the algae off and you kind of end up with a ball of it uh, that then you can put wherever you want. Put it in a, in a get a bowl of warm water and uh, just kind of take your hands and roll it, roll your fingers together in that water and then scoot it to the side so it sticks to the side of the bowl so you've got an open fresh area of water. That works pretty well. So I hope these little tips and tricks help. If that fails, you can do a blackout. You can get the stuff that kills algae. Um, but most of the stuff like Flourish XL, it's just carbon. So if you're running on CO2, up that CO2. Make sure you don't gas your fish out. And up your flow rate. And those two things, as well as either turning down your light if you're not going to go crazy with the CO2, or turning up your light if you are using the CO2 so that the plants outcompete that that uh, source of energy for the algae, then you are going to be golden. You're going you're gonna to get over the bloom in a week or less even, and you should be good. The other thing that can cause it is overfeeding or natural sunlight that's, you know, certain times a year, maybe you're getting more or less in through the window. So try to eliminate variables uh, so that you can kind of dial in, you know, a lifestyle for your tank and an ecosystem that works for your tank and also make sure to change your filters and things like that. I use just simply biological filters and mechanical filter in the sense that my uh, I use filter floss that's basically a big bank of uh, beneficial bacteria as is most of the tank on the plants and the rocks. So I hope these tips help you guys, and I hope that helps you understand where it comes from. Uh, it doesn't mean if you got it because, like, I started using Easy Green instead of the ADA. Well, I obviously, between the two of them, have too much, probably, like, phosphorus change and, you know, nitrogen or nitrates, nitrite change somewhere in the equation. Probably, you know, nitrates would be the, the thing, even though plants use nitrites. Uh, your fish don't like them, so they're generally not included in fertilizers uh, that are put together in a like liquid formula, although they do exist in natural uh, fertilizers from the ground, from, from organic matter. So I hope this helped you guys. If it did, please like. If you have any questions, put them in the question area. If you have any other great tips, put them down in the comments and uh, help other folks. And, you know, getting good circulation around the whole tank, as you can see here, this bounces off here. It actually drifts back here, comes back around. And the way you can do that is you can just float something on the water and look for dead spots. Look for where things are floating and not moving uh, and not returning to your filter. So, all right, guys, I got to get out of here. I hope you have a good day. I hope your algae problems go away. Take care of your tanks yourself, the people around you, and it will all come back to you twofold.
I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.